Where do you start with Roy Moore? With a 20-year career in Alabama politics, Moore is a rags to nonprofit derived riches success story, a connoisseur of courthouse statuary, an avid supporter of renewable fuels. They don't use gas. <laughs> but like his horse Sassy there, he leaves a lot of sh** behind him. But it's time now for us to start taking more seriously again, because if we're not careful, this is the guy who will be representing Alabama in the United States Senate. And I can't wait. Lots of Alabamians love Moore because he has a history of standing up to the godless, overreaching federal government, and that's a song we can't help but dance to. Oh, I thought you were a she, you a he, oh my goodness. In 1994, Moore was appointed Etowah County Circuit Judge by Fob James, an Alabama governor who promised to run the state like a Waffle House, open for business 24-7, unless it's Confederate Memorial Day. State workers never got their paper hats and Anthony Bourdain never parachuted in to call us exotic, but what we did get was a crude, homemade wood carving of the Ten Commandments Roy Moore hung on his courtroom wall. The ACLU sued to take them down, James threatened to call out the National Guard to keep them up, and Moore became an icon for people who want to worship in a place where people are sometimes sentenced to death. Moore rode his new fame into the Alabama Supreme Court, where once elected, he installed a washing machine-sized monument that included the Ten Commandments, which he copyrighted. The federal courts told him to move it. Moore told them no. So the Alabama Court of the Judiciary removed Moore for defying a federal court order. And that is what most people remember about Roy Moore. But there's so much more. Moore was the chief executive of the entire court system with administrative duties like making sure it doesn't go broke, which Moore kind of sucked at. When the legislature didn't give him the funding he wanted for the court system, Moore didn't cut spending, at least not until the court system ran out of money. At that point, Moore suspended all civil trials and criminal jury trials until the state gave him what he asked for. Moore doesn't run government like a business. Hell, he doesn't even run it like a Waffle House. He runs it like an all-he-can-eat buffet he wants to put out of business. He ran for governor twice, and twice he lost those races. First to a Republican governor who tried to raise taxes, and then to a geriatric sex fiend. It seemed Alabama was done with Roy Moore, but then he campaigned for Chief Justice again. And this time, he wasn't campaigning on the Ten Commandments, he had a new issue. L-G-B-T, let's think of what that is. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender rights. Moore made fighting same-sex marriage his new signature issue, like the lost cause of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson, whose graven images Moore keeps on his desk. It was a fight Moore was destined to lose, and again, he defied a federal court order, telling probate judges they had a duty to ignore those higher court rulings. Later, Moore would argue in court that his order was not actually an order, even though it clearly said order at the top and order at the bottom. If that sounds stupid, it's not. Because again, Moore was right where he wanted to be. Is George Wallace an inspiration to you now? I, I understand you'd be unhappy and you say you'd refuse yourself. Federal you to marry people. According to the fixed rules which govern the interpretation of law, many friends who, who are homosexual. But if you think it's a state's rights issue or about the limitation of government power, think again. Roy Moore hates gay people. And it's worth taking a moment to see how much. More than once, he ruled in child custody cases to take children away from their mothers because the mothers were gay. In a 2002 Supreme Court opinion, Moore called homosexuality abominable, detestable, unmentionable, and too disgusting and well-known to require other definition or further details or description. In that case, the court ruled against the mother, who was gay, and gave custody to a father who had admitted to slapping the children and even bugging the children's phones to record conversations they were having with their mother. But Moore went a step further in court documents to explain his reasoning. Moore wrote, the state carries the power of the sword. That is, the power to prohibit conduct with physical penalties such as confinement and even execution. It must use that power to prevent the subversion of children towards this lifestyle to not encourage a criminal lifestyle. The power of the sword? Oh, 
Holy sh**. Moore isn't arguing here for some sort of distinction between marriage and civil unions. He's arguing that the state has the power that he thinks it should use to keep parents from exposing their kids to their gayness. Powers that include putting them in jail or even killing them. Moore isn't alone in this kind of state-sanctioned homophobia. Take, for example, what he said recently to a reporter from The Guardian about another gay-hating demagogue in the news. We promote a lot of bad things, you know? Like? Same-sex marriage. That's the very argument that Vladimir Putin makes. Well, then maybe Putin is right. Maybe he's more akin to me than I know. <laughs> Roy Moore says he loves America. He even wrote a poem about America, which you can find on his nonprofit's website. It's called America the Beautiful. And if you're thinking, I didn't know Roy Moore wrote that song, well, this one is a bit different. America the Beautiful, or so you used to be, land of the pilgrim's pride, I'm glad they're not here to see. Babies piled in dumpsters, abortion on demand, oh sweet land of liberty, your house is on the sand. And it just gets ickier from there. Roy Moore is very good at quoting the Founding Fathers, the Constitution, the Bible, the Declaration of Independence, just as he is at reading his own bad poetry. But ultimately, it's a parlor trick. And it's one that unless you're a constitutional law scholar or an American history professor, you can't easily refute on the spot. But slow things down and fire up the Google, and it's fairly easy to disprove or debunk much of what Moore says. Take, for instance, this quote on the front of his old Ten Commandments monument. It comes from the Declaration of Independence, and it's maybe the biggest hook on which Moore hangs his argument that this is a Christian's only nation. Those words were written by Thomas Jefferson, who was at best ambivalent on the issue of Jesus' divinity. Jefferson famously took a razor to a Bible, cutting and pasting together a narrative that doesn't include the virgin birth, doesn't include any miracles, doesn't acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God, and ends with Jesus being put in a tomb dead, no resurrection. This is not a product of revisionist history or, or hero shaming. His contemporaries did that for us, even accusing Jefferson of being a closet Muslim. <laughs> I mean, come on. The one thing Jefferson believed in strongly was a wall between church and state. State and religion must be kept separate because each corrupts the other. In Alabama, we know something about corruption, and Moore's Republican opponent, Luther Strange, certainly knows a lot about corruption. But Moore is spiritually corrupt, and that might be even worse. Remember, this is a guy who says that God himself put a boastful, covetous, serial slanderer in the White House by divine providence. And not only did Moore put his copyright on his Ten Commandments monument, but he frequently autographs Bibles at his campaign events and anyone who will sign their name to a Bible has forgotten who God is. Alabama has sent more packing before, and it's time to do it again. Him and the horse he rode in on. If you like these videos, be sure to follow us on Reckon by AL.com on Facebook. For Reckon, I'm Kyle Whitmire. Thanks for watching.